Hey, Hesbos. <laughs> We're off to a rough start, Zach and I. We are. It's uh, going to be a hell of a season finale. I, I would say it's tense. <laughs> season finale, series finale. No, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. How was the Bay Area? Loved oh, wait, it. We got to do the intro first. Yeah, I'm always doing it. Oh, sorry. Follow us, subscribe, rate and review, start the episode. Patreon.com slash Hesby Street. Bonus episode. Dude, if this is on YouTube and you're watching it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And then text it to everyone you know. Yeah, text, hit text all. <laughs> <laughs> Add us to your contacts. Uh, Allow us access to your contacts. Uh -huh, that's, that's a new it. one. Yeah. That's a new one. Put us in your bio. Hey, guys, if you're loving the show, allow us access to all contacts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, if you enjoy this podcast, allow app to track. <laughs> you know what's funny is Go I, into settings. iPhone does like the new like ask app to not track. They, they like advertise right. in a commercial. They're like throwing shade at Facebook, essentially. <laughs> totally, but it's also like ask them. Right. You know, you're just like, yeah, right. let's do that. And they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to track you. That's cute. Thanks for all the questions. Dude, I can't stand the f iPhone telling me how many minutes I have been on the phone. I hate it. Oh, I never look at that. It's I get it every week. It's like, you averaged five hours and 35 minutes on your phone today. And I'm like, please tell me that includes Spotify. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> tell me that's not five hours of looking at my phone. But it might be. How often are you just staring at Spotify, too? you got to keep that in consideration. <laughs> just changing playlists. Be like, surely this isn't the music I like. But you know, Spotify is like, we know you. It is. I think we might cross over to Spotify. We're an Apple Music family. Oh, yeah. I'm a Spotify guy. We're also on Spotify. Maybe some people are listening to us on Spotify right now. Yeah, we went with Rogan. Yep. That was we the day we said, shifted. you know what? You know what? I'm out. <laughs> I'm out, man. <laughs> Check me out on Spotify, man. I don't understand what that means. So you can only listen to Rogan on Spotify? Uh-huh. He signed a contract for $100 million. Ours was a smaller contract. Uh-huh. Almost like you didn't even sign one. More of a cease and desist. <laughs> it was more of just agree to terms. <laughs> a lot of clicking on boxes. Not so much signing any dotted lines. Dude, I stayed in a hotel last night, and before I could check in, I had to agree to eight pages of covid restrictions oh my god and i didn't read any of them but i just clicked clicking next. he's like you gotta click next on all of them oh it's a computerized contract mm -hmm. and i was just like what is all of this like it's like midnight i'm like i just want to go to sleep <laughs> they're like <laughs> and here's your new camera and, and they're like all right <laughs> <laughs> and just need the blood dose specimen and we're good to go and i'm like no nice yeah. place or was it like a total shithole <laughs> it was um for what i paid for it was pretty nice but I'm saying, like, you sign all those pages and you walk into your room and go, oh, this place has COVID. Like, what are you <laughs> That must be why. They're like, hey, listen, you're going to get COVID here. <laughs> and we need you to agree to it eight times before we can legally uh, not be responsible. I had to rush down here from the Bay Area just so that you, we could do this pod so that you can watch preseason 49er football. Wait, wait, actually, let's, let's step back here. Okay. All you really have to do is show up on our scheduled Monday morning podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but then I, you but keep going, can we do this day instead? I don't want to drive on Monday. And I go, okay. And yeah. then I go, I got stuff to do. And you go, Ugh, this guy. This guy and his stuff to do. You're right. You're absolutely it's right. It's date night. My but wife and I, I watch just... the Niners preseason football on okay. date night. I, just, I think it's just cute that you care about preseason football. What do you mean? It's like maybe a headline. Do you watch the whole game? Pretty much, yeah. You watch the fourth quarter where there's nobody relevant I've, anymore. I've watched. I love that football's back. I've watched. I mean, I get other it. teams. I watched preseason baseball. So. I've watched other teams beginning to end games. Damn. Like I watched the. Uh, Do you think that I watched the end of the Giants Browns today? But is that more just because you're lonely? No, I just love. I love it, man. I love it. I man. am lonely because I'm in the film room, man. <laughs> I love it. I'm putting on tape from. I'm with 22 other guys. <laughs> That's I saw, uh, I was watching the game. I love how the announcers talk. I miss football so much. His announcers, you know, they have to like learn little things about players. Dude, I only care before you get into it. I need a fantasy football league. If anyone listening has a spot. You don't have a league? No, and I don't care about football if I'm not playing fantasy. So someone get me in your league. I'm ready to draft right now. I think that's sadder 
than well, me watching preseason football. Because I don't care so about the Chargers anymore, man. Yeah, so but I you don't have a, a group of friends. Team. Well, I, I quit my league last year. We talked about this. Why? Because someone traded uh, Travis Kelsey for a quarterback. And I said, this, is, this league's ridiculous. And I made a scene. And I and I left. I left the league. So add this guy to your next add, league. And I, and I won't quit. I mean, I didn't. It's not like I quit the league. But they haven't reached I out said, to I, you. No, no, no. I said, I'm not coming back. This league's dumb. You guys are dumb. But I played the season out. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But uh, I want to play with people that. There were some people in the league that didn't know what they were doing. Hmm. So I don't want your ho-dunk league. Like, send me a good league where people know that a tight end for a quarterback trade is unacceptable. Anyways, yeah. back to the 49ers. So, yeah, back to the, the funny story I was going to tell you. <laughs> you guys, did everyone get I that I need at a home? league. <laughs> I need a – this is about me. I uh, I guess while we're at it, I could use um, salsa verde. I'm out. I need some more to make this chicken. You just need green salsa. I need someone to bring over green salsa. Okay. So, okay. I got you, dude. And that's I already it for brought over. I already brought over ice cream sandwiches for you. <laughs> you so, did? Yeah, your favorites. Did you really, dude? I'm gonna win. Yeah, check your freezer. I'm gonna win this weight loss challenge. That's real sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna throw them up after I eat them. We'll see. Yum, yum. All of, make sure you get all of it. <laughs> I also brought you a bottle of bourbon that I just poured sugar packets in. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that makes it so much tastier. I know. <laughs> that's just how I like my bourbon. <laughs> So I was watching. Uh, Your Brit is full of sugar too. That's <laughs> fucked up. That's actually fucked up. Because like I'm trying to be healthy yeah. and you're just fucking me. <laughs> like if I reach for the ice cream sandwich, I reach for the bourbon. I'm asking for. Uh-huh. That's a mistake I'm making. Play to win, baby. Water. I'm here to win. I'm going for water. <laughs> Zach, you have a uh, severe dehydration. <laughs> I'm bloating up, doc. <laughs> How do you feel the first week's been for you? You feeling good? Uh, I don't feel great. Um, about your performance or just physically don't feel great it's been both it's been it's been a week of uh, it's been one week (laughs) since you looked at me (laughs) it's tough like I miss uh, junk food yep really bad I miss bad food I send you a lot of uh, you just send me he just sends me reels of delicious I don't even watch them you don't watch them no it's more painful for me because I watch them and then I just reply yeah I reply with just San Diego Padre highlights yeah (laughs) here's something you won't watch yeah yeah that definitely kills my appetite Uh uh-huh just how bad they are I'm like oof they're not good I'm not eating tonight (laughs) um it's funny. A lot of people, met, a few people, messaged us being like, "I want in on this," and I'm like, oh, "Okay," yeah. and then never heard from them again. They're not dedicated. It's hard. I wanted out right uh-huh. when we started. I'm uh-huh. like, "Let's not do this. This is so stupid." Um, I'm I think if a Hezbo wants to be in it, they should get their birthday month. Like, if they want to be in it and they lose with one of us, like if they don't, they got to be shirtless with us. So the basically, loser. they're they're okay. If you're a Hezbo at home and you want to be a part of this. Weigh yourself now and, and be straight up about it yep. and see if you can lose more weight than us mm-hmm. when we start. Uh-huh. Uh, um, if you do, then uh, we'll let you pick the that your birthday month, what we do. Oh, yeah. That's a fun one. Yeah. Any, the picture we'll take is. all your birthday suggestions. Yeah. You could be fully clothed. You could be on a Harley if you want. Mm-hmm. People are going to be like, this is such a weird calendar. <laughs> and then if you lose, you have to take a shirtless photo of yourself. Yep. Send it to us and we'll put you on the bottom of that month. Yeah. You mean the top? Well, just at the, in the, in like, kind of like uh, picture in picture. Oh, you know I know see. I mean? Okay. Okay. It'll be us. And then a little photo of that month's losing Hezbos. I see. Okay. Yeah. You know, it'd be kind of fun is if the calendar, one of us is fully clothed. Oh, yeah. I think that we should do that, at least for a couple months. Yeah. yeah. We, I've gotten so many ideas, like being in the Bay, so many, like some people came to shows and we're like, oh, cool. What about this? Or I got ideas. Where people just like, got some work to do. Everyone's real supportive, man. Oh, really? Yeah. I think we have some pretty uh, friendly. supportive, friendly Hezbos. Mature bunch. Yeah. A lot of people told me they voted for me and they're counting on me. That's cool. When yeah. I'm on stage, people are like, you got a little ass dick. And then I'm like, I bet you don't listen to Hesby Street. <laughs> I, I You're think, not a fan of the pod. I think our podcast listeners know I can't handle, I couldn't handle criticism. N- criticism. They're like, I can't tell him he's going to lose. Yeah. He's hanging on by a thread as it is. 
Yeah, I, I really need you guys' help. I really need your guys' help. I think John Smolensky said he was going to go see you at a show and buy you, uh, bring some junk food for you. He did come to a show. He did not bring junk that food. He's a true friend. Scoundrel. Thanks, John. Um, um, anyways, back to your story. Thank you. Yes. Football's back. That's My right. My favorite voice is football voice. I love it, man. Mm-hmm. This is awesome. What, and so they try to do little sound bites of each player, you know, but it's preseason. They don't know, like, they're getting little snippets mm-hmm. of guys trying to make the team. I'm not exaggerating when I say one announcer goes, it's guy 82, man. The guy loves billboards. <laughs> 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 and then I had to, like, pause and go, like, what? He loves billboards? <laughs> he loves billboards and airplane. <laughs> They're just reading off a note sheet. He points you know I mean? a billboard. He po- oh, totally. So then yeah. he keeps reading and he goes like, he bought a billboard in town. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it says like, it's like a, a he bought a billboard to make an ad that's just a reminder to kind of be happy and right. like enjoy life. Uh-huh. You know, like this is your day. Right. Uh, and that was the actual story. But mm-hmm. he starts it off with that. Uh, the, the guy loves billboards. <laughs> it's like, yep. You know me. My biggest hobbies are <laughs> billboards, um, looking both ways before crossing the street. It just feels like a five-year-old's thing. Right. Like, I like billboards. Mm-hmm. I like twucks. <laughs> well, I was at the uh, Padre game, and, and so, like, f- for the opposing players, they'll put, like, a fun fact on the jumbo <laughs> screen, and this one, and they're so dumb. Right. And one guy, it just said, likes Matthew McConaughey and Papa Roach. And I like, I felt like they were trolling him. Right. Because you're like in the box and you look up at your giant face and you're like, I don't like pop. Yeah. Pop, Wait, what? Did, w- did I say that Strike. in eighth grade? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? They look at my yearbook? What? Right. Papa Roach? Yeah. That's, <laughs> this is my last resort. That's funny. <laughs> so Cut my weird. life into pieces. <laughs> that is funny. That's like a fun way to get in a baseball player's head. But I don't think that's what they were doing but i hope it was or or the player could have been like uh i think they just look at an old bio at some point he said he liked papa roach that's what i'm guessing it's just like in comedy where like sometimes they'll put your bio up and it's like from 2013 right it's It's like like, torio has once headlined at danny's pizza yeah runs a show every two every other tuesday at the chuckle buns cafe you know (laughs) whatever it is pete's coffee right you're like, Zach competed in the National <laughs> College Comedy yeah. Competition. I'll see that one. I'm like, I should do an yeah. internet. In the headshots, me without a beard and like a plaid shirt. And yeah. I'm like, please don't. Right. Yeah. Just wasted. Old Toria, <laughs> just absolutely blacked out drunk. I always wanted to get, speaking of billboards, like uh, when I lived up in Bass Lake at that worked at that resort there was like a tiny billboard for sale like on the way to work and my buddy was the gm of the resort Mm -hmm. and i was like i bet i could buy that billboard and like i had a picture of him just hammered and just put it there (laughs) and just everyone going to work would just drive by so you did it no i didn't do it Uh, but like i always wanted to do that next time you tell a story like that just just lie yeah say you. okay let me try again okay so i um invaded afghanistan by myself (laughs) (laughs) and saved everybody dude i just want to give a comedian shout out to kyle dunnigan and his instagram youtube series uh fresh prince of dc where he does (laughs) (laughs) he's like in screen pa where i spend most of my days and it's such a funny and he always has a new like colloquialism that doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. so like the end of the intro song it's like what Fresh Prince of Bel Air song, and at the yep. end he's like, "Come on, get your face out of your ears, <laughs> get your face out of your ears." So it's not a Trump voice. What is it? It's Biden. Biden. Scram got PA. It. You oh right, Scram PA. But then he's got all these other characters. He does uh, AOC. He does Hunter. He does Ben Shapiro. Is like the the Oof. the the bellhop. At Love the, it. Um, he does the he does the uh, president of China. Okay. He does an impression of him, but he just does a straight up like mafia Tony Soprano. <laughs> 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 like nice try, dude. Not getting caught on this one. Right, so it's yeah. just like, what are you doing over here? You're making China look bad. <laughs> Go check it out. Check out Kyle Dunnigan, one of my favorite comedians in LA. Dude, 
you recapping something made me think of this. Okay. I love when you think of things. Yeah. 90 Day Fiance is over. And I didn't watch any of this season because I don't live with you anymore. But? But I'd love to hear you recap the highlights. Wait, you didn't watch the recap? No, I didn't watch any of it. You had to watch the recap, dude. You told me to watch the recap and then I chose to live my life as is without doing that. Oh, uh, well, it's you got to know the people, man. It's it's just give me what happened with basically Natalie. the juiciest thing in 90 Day Fiance is Natalie gets caught and called out by the entire cast at the reunion. What'd she get caught? She's from Russia or Ukraine? Ukraine. And she's married a guy in Mike, Washington. Michael. 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 Good. And she gets caught doing what she get caught doing. Basically marrying him for citizenship and like leaving him. And he's totally like paying her way to like live in a different state. She what do you mean a- she got caught doing that? <clears throat> That's like what everyone suspects. Yeah, but uh, no one's really like blatantly doing that. Only a few times Arya's is like, oh, dude, you clearly like people marry and become there, there's an agreement to yeah. two K1 visas, I think. Right. And a, some people are purely in love. A large portion of people are marrying for purpose. Love's not real. Go ahead. They're marrying for purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, neither is God, but people go to church. (laughs) Right. So people are marrying for love, Mm -hmm. whether it's real or not. Mm -hmm. And other people are basically like, it's a a barter. It's an exchange. Like you be my wife, you have sex with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I work and provide and you live in a country that's in a financial situation that's better than the one you had back home. Right. Um, it's, I don't think it's anything. I don't know. I have people in my family. So how did she get caught? Well, she, can't you just say like, they went to uh, Thanksgiving and she goes, your mom called me hooker. I will not talk to her. And he's like, what? No, she didn't. When? Wasn't even on camera. And she just refused to talk. So then she leaves and she starts staying with her Ukrainian girlfriend in, uh, in town. She wait, like girlfriend, like they hooking up. No, like a friend. Sorry, dude. Rest boner down. All right, down. Or, oh, hold on, boner, get off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and so then she doesn't go home. So he flips out in front of the camera crew one night, and he's like, "Hey, you're always staying with your friend. I bought you a hundred Christmas gifts. What did you do with all the Christmas gifts I brought you? You gave them all to the family that you're staying with." And she's like, "This is true. I'm not perfect." <laughs> and then she's like, "But we fight." We fight all the time, Michael. So I stay with where it's quiet. And he's like, come home to me. His voice kind of cracks. He's like, right. come home to me. And then he does these like corny, like, later alligator. All right, later alligator. It's like, dude, you're in a fight. Like, chill with right. the later alligator. Yeah. He's like, sup, punkasaurus. And you're like, dude, this is a woman from Ukraine. Yeah, but it's like, he must have not any game. Or even a great personality, if he's buying a woman a hundred gifts and like he didn't buy her a hundred, but he bought her a, ton, a bunch right. of gifts. Well, I mean, I don't know. That's how some people try to resolve issues. Fair. It is a love language. It's a, it's a love language. It's your least favorite it's one. My least favorite. Thanks. Also, for, very I feel heard. Very telling that she's marrying him for the wrong reasons. Uh-huh. So in the re, the recap, <clears throat> we find out that how's everything going with the marriage? She now lives in Florida in an apartment that he pays for. Damn. And he's working his butt off because, like, everyone got COVID. His company's, like, going under. Right. So he has gotta, to work twice as hard. He's got two mortgages. Yeah. And uh, then she says she's not seeing anyone. Uh-oh. Jovi, the New Orleans couple, and his Ukrainian wife, he's like, who is that dude you was with when you came to New Orleans? And then the whole place is like, oh. and she turns around beat red. What if he was gay? How do you know he's not gay? He's like, he ain't look gay to me. <laughs> <laughs> so then they're like on the spot in front of her. He's like, I could help you find a divorce lawyer. right? He, or he goes, anyone got a divorce lawyer? And then he's like, I'll hook you up, man. Like, just, you, I, I would cut ties with her the whole time. And then another Russian wife is like, you make all of us look bad. The way you do this marriage for not love. Just for getting in here, tricking him and leaving once you have citizenship. And it was just this huge confrontation where she's like, I'm a bad person. I'm it's okay fine she just believe what you it? want to believe she oh, didn't no. admit that she didn't do that right but i mean any one of us getting called out in a room on national television right. for for some shady shitty behavior so she wasn't in the room it's still like covid zoom stuff no they're all in a room oh they're all in a room 
they're socially distanced as couples, right. but they have like different couches, but they're all in the room. Damn. So she's like turning around like on the spot. Spicy. Dude, it's so spicy. I don't know if the Hezbos are going to find this interesting. Um, well, I own, I don't like watching 90 Day Fiance, but I like hearing you uh, do I, the accents Michael, and give me the recap. You always man. fight. Your mom called me hooker. Your and the mom, mom me hooker. shows up. She's like, I never once... Why would I go to your face? I just invite you over for Thanksgiving. Mm. The mom's like, what did I say that you even think was right. Hooker? Like, clearly she never did. So you're like, either she misheard her, and then as time goes on. Well, I like to believe women. So whatever she says, I believe. The mom or the... Either, both. Both. Okay. I yeah. just want that on record on the podcast. I guess... The, I'm with her I, and her. All right, I guess the response is, you're a good person. Thank you. You're welcome, man. <laughs> you're very welcome. All right. I relate to that shit, though, because my mom, when she married my dad, a lot of people thought that uh, they were. Right. And I have a lot of Moroccans that are married to uh, Americans. And I think some of them are probably like an exchange. Like, it, I mean, maybe they love each other now in a sense that they're raising kids and, like, look at this beautiful family. But I think they married of, like, hey, get me out of this village and I'll be a subservient. Like, in my mom's in my mom's right. village, marriage was a contract thing. No one married for love. Yeah. You married because it's, like, it's time we bring these families together. Mm-hmm. You start making babies with you. <laughs> and it's, like, it's kind of weird. But in a lot of ways, it is kind of, like, a it's beautiful be. pack. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen. Okay, we got to compete with my, other my, families. My grandma wanted me to go to Morocco and marry cousins. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why my mom didn't teach me Moroccan. Because I would honestly be like, what's she saying? And I was like, I will never tell you. Yeah. <laughs> like, just live your life. Be happy. Uh-huh. Find a girl you like. And I'm so grateful that I didn't have that, like, family obligation. Right. Did you ever have that? Like, uh, your mom just wants kids. She doesn't necessarily want you to, like, lock down with someone. She just wants kids. <laughs> she's like figure it out man yeah donate doesn't have to be yours Sur- she's, she's like i found some. a sweet surrogate family yeah <laughs> look at this adoption agency the, the dad's sterile i <laughs> mentioned your name they might be calling you soon just want to give you a heads up. <laughs> don't check off for three days uh, you know weird. now non-vax sperm is like a hot thing oh god it's expensive yeah i guess that makes sense because people are idiots i should sell my friends <laughs> Speaking of, I, I brought you a booster shot. So Did after you? the pot, I can, we, I, can, I can give it to you. It's going to be straight sugar, isn't it? It's just simple <laughs> syrup. <laughs> you just go into like... Epileptic oh, shot. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you see when you're up in the Bay? Any interesting stories? No. Hold on. Let me think. Come on, man. Have a life worth living. Didn't you want to be a creative writer? Mm-hmm. Create. I'm not even asking you to write. I'm trying to re- I'm trying to recap my uh, my weekend. Did you take the van? I did not take the van. The van is officially up for sale. If anyone wants it, it's up for sale. I'm sure we could work out a deal. If you he could knock a few bucks off. If you have a fantasy football league, you could hop on. That's absolutely true. <laughs> but I'm gonna need a top five draft pick. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> yeah, the van's done, dude. Man. It's looking good. I'm gonna sell it. Moving back to LA in a couple weeks. Oh, you know what's a funny story about that? Hmm. Uh, remember how we used to talk about, um, okay. I was pr- at, at punchline with Emily yeah. and I walked around like that area by, by punchline, like financial district. Mm-hmm. And there's this van parked, uh, like an old Chrysler van. And it had like a giant dirty stuffed teddy bear on top. And also like a wheelchair, like taped down and all this like right. equipment. And I was like, that's fuck." People were walking by like, is this a bomb about to go off? Right. All across this van, painted, like hand-painted, like mm-hmm. brush, was like words and threats to the government. It was like nonsense, too. It would be like military codes of war. And then it would say like, Biden is Trump's puppet for Mexico or something like that. Like, it's a good way to not get your van broken I looked into. and I'm like, Torio, I think I found the perfect paint <laughs> job. <laughs> Just straight up death threats to the U.S. government. Yeah, but they'll call the cops on it. They won't Everyone break into looked. it. You know what was the most terrifying thing is I visited <clears throat> friends on the other side of San Francisco and I saw the van again. Ooh, so that is terrible. Yeah, it could He's be a keeping, Hezbo. It could be just keeping an eye on you. It did say all everything is nothing on the windshield and blood, <laughs> as it shall ever be. <laughs> I said that, but yeah, I would not fuck with that van. 
I think honestly they were supposed to get towed and they were like, eh, eh. <laughs> yeah, the tow driver was like, not worth it. <laughs> Call another company, yeah. bro. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's pretty scary. That is scary. But it There's was it un- was the perfect paint job where he had like windows and a bunch of stuff in his car. Right. Like you're thinking San Francisco, a no car way full of I shit. In there. <laughs> yeah. Oof. But you do have to have that on your car. Like you're not picking up a stranger in the yeah, van with that. You have on. to li- you have to exist in it. <laughs> I mean, there's no way that's just a normal dude in that car. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Like it that's be, not strategic. <laughs> it would be so funny if it was just like a pursuit of happiness guy, like Will Smith's kid, just yeah. like a dad trying to make it. Yeah, he's like, he's like, so I started painting death threats <laughs> just because then no one messes with my car. This is all I have in my car. It's everything. Uh, and then the, I'm, kid, I'm the kid's solver. like all embarrassed <laughs> but grows up and is like dad did what he had to do dad people even think, though i got picked up from school in this dad everyone at school is calling me dc sniper and his <laughs> kid. <laughs> please get a regular paint job on the van oh my gosh. they're saying we're the dc sniper um so you're gonna miss your van when you sell it yeah, I'm gonna miss it. You know what I'm? You know what I'm really upset about is I never did. I took only took it in California. Yeah, I was like, I never got to go to Colorado or like or Zion Utah, or, yeah, or uh, even coast to coast. Yeah, so I feel like big missed opportunity. But it's still there. I mean, mm-hmm. the opportunity is there. No, that was my only chance to go to Utah. <laughs> All right, if that's how you want to do it. No, yeah, I uh, I don't think I'll ever. I don't think I'd do the. I think. If I do a camping trip, it'll be a smaller car and just camp. Yeah. I don't think I'm like in love with the camper lifestyle. Right. It's fun. Right. It's fun, but I don't need it. It's, it's cool. It's cool it's, when it's not your problem. I don't, I didn't find myself cooking a ton and using right. the kitchen. For right. me, it's like I'm out. Yeah. I'm with friends. I'm not going to be like, hey, come into my, I'll make us oatmeal. Yeah. I think it's you know a couple's I mean? thing. Yeah. It's a couple's thing. But like when it's you, you're like, nah, what's it called? <laughs> Bruce Chris Steakhouse yeah, I'll go no, guys come on in here yeah. I got some flank steaks mm-hmm. I'm gonna cook them on my bed counter yeah <laughs> <laughs> can you guys bring a bucket I have one chair <laughs> yeah. bring a bucket or like a folding camping chair that is a great point when you're solo it's the party's not in the van the party's away from the van right like if I'm driving that van by myself mm-hmm. I'm meeting friends at a bar or a restaurant I mean I made the van with two seats and a table thinking like yeah it'd be nice to like have a friend come in when I'm in town but it's like that's not how it works well yeah because it's like who is that friend that you're going hey man thanks for coming you can't sleep here well no it's also just <laughs> you like figure out where you whenever you see a friend yeah they could come in the van or you could go into their house <laughs> <laughs> right so uh. Right, yeah. if you sleep in the van instead of going in, it's like, all right, I guess Terry wants to prove Well, that's a, the other thing. He's proven a point. I did that once. I was like, I'll just sleep in the van. I don't want to put you guys out. But then it was weird. I think we talked about that, where it's just like, yeah, I'll sleep in your guest room. Yeah. It's right. more uncomfortable for in every manner for yeah. me to sleep in the van Yeah, instead. it's like, all right, so I guess we'll leave the door unlocked in case you need to use the bathroom. <laughs> we'll leave the front door unlocked <laughs> and just disarm the house. Yep. You're like, all right, let me grab my... Yeah. I'll come No, in. it's... I'm uh, <clears throat> yeah but i mean it, it would have been fun to take it yeah further out yeah but, but you gotta world, find that you know? person the world and, is and the as world. you've told the pod before you had no interest in finding that person on a van trip you know you appreciated the freedom of like like i don't want us to be like adventuring the world together well two people in the van would be have its own problems because it's small yeah but you know if, what i mean if it's someone you're betting in the biblical sense, uh-huh. you share a lot of space. Sure. It's still small. But then you're peeing in front of each other. You know, things are happening. So step out for a second while they pee. But then you're driving with their pee sloshing around. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's just, it's, there's a reason most people have homes and cars and they're <laughs> separate. Yeah. But I learned that. No, but it was a super fun. I'm glad I did it and I should make money and it was a fun experience and all that. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, you're going to make money. But if you just become a van flipper is like your day job, dude, I wouldn't hate it. It sounds just, cool. Just like make a van. You'd probably get really good by like van two or three too. Like you'd start like mm-hmm. playing a little bit. I already more. know my mistakes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you're selling the van. You're moving to LA. Yeah. Very excited to have you uh, 
come here to podcast on a regular day. Don't. <laughs> it's going to be the highlight of my life. Uh huh. Happy for you. And no more remote episodes. That'll be Hopefully. good. Hopefully. Except, you know what? I can edit us from talking over each other. But we're, um, when we're remote. I mean, we're still, but we're doing more weekends on the road. So we'll still be doing some remote episodes. Just don't. Don't, man. Okay. I Stay just won't here. book weekends. Stay here. Just book here. Hang out at the comedy store. Hang out at the improv. <laughs> that's where, that's how it happens. Trust me. I talked to a guy by the name of, uh, Mel Brooks. Mm hmm. He used to just hang out at the front of the comedy store. Really? He said, one day they said, hey, Mel, do you know jokes? I said, sure, I know jokes. <laughs> do I know jokes? I'm so they Brooks. let me in the original room, which at the time was called the new room. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only room. <laughs> he used to call it the only room. <laughs> it used to be the only room. Then they tried to revamp. They did the new room. <laughs> Brand new room. Ooh. Oh my god, I'm so ashamed of how funny that joke is to us. <laughs> We're getting old. Dude, we are getting old. Oh, it yeah. sucks. It sucks. Ugh. We have to get ripped. This is our last chance. I'm getting to a point where like I'm waking if I cause, like I like to sleep on my side sometimes, and Ooh. I think that I'm just too old for that now. Cause I'll just wake up and a shoulder hurts. Yeah. It's like, nope, your body can one. no longer be Hold. slept on. You know, but when you work out. Mm -hmm. it's better like you have muscles that kind of hold things in place <laughs> right. and then when you don't it's just like your tendons are on their own it's a good try i'm not i'm not gaining any muscle during the weight loss challenge <laughs> i think it was don't a good effort that was never a fear of mine <laughs> i was just speaking genuinely um i've actually for the first time had woke up today with both arms completely asleep <laughs> <laughs> that is a terrifying feeling. I couldn't get. I had to use my knees to get up. <laughs> just like face down in a pillow. Like, is this how I die? Whoa! Oh, I just had to muscle it. Core. That's funny. I activated my core. I, you know, so much of my time is spent activating my core. <laughs> I don't even know how to do it. You don't know how to activate it? No. How do you do it? I'm doing it right now. You stretch it. I'm doing it right now. Oh, you just clench your core. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Something breaks. Oh, I broke a rib. I'm activated. <laughs> I'm like, can we cut for a second? <laughs> My poops are weird now that I'm eating healthy. My poops look like cliff bars. <laughs> That's good that they're not, it's not diarrhea. It's like seedy. I feel like when I go healthy, usually the first week they get a little weird in, yeah. a in like a, uh, like a not. But a but a cliff bar, I is that's like solid. It's solid, but it just looks like a lot of nuts and oats. <laughs> I'm like, look at you, you little snack. So what are you? What are get you, out of here. What's a day of eating I, for you? When I flush, I go get out of here. What's your health uh, strategy? Um, I have I have room to improve, but I have been doing uh, no sugar, no unnatural sugar. Mm -hmm. So you have fruit. I'll have fruit. You know what I've been loving as like a dessert, mm -hmm. but I probably need to dial it back. Is I'll do a, a date. With a with half walnuts in it, it's so good. I feel like a Moroccan dude. Dates, it's crazy that they come from the earth and just taste like a straight up donut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's not a lot that of good sugar. For you. A lot of sugar. A lot of sugar in a date. A lot of sugar. A lot, lot of, of fat in a walnut. A lot of fiber though. Yeah. So that poop is fucking. Bow. Yeah. Scraping my my insides clean. So we're like twenty five percent. I do a smoothie. A lot of fruit. A lot no, of sugar. I don't put More any, sugar. I don't put any fruit in my smoothie. Okay. Oh, actually, no, I do half a banana. But do you use the Brita? <laughs> a been, lot of sugar. I've been using... <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and then I do uh, light breakfast, like maybe hard-boiled egg. I've been making a frittata. Mm. I'm a frittata guy, dude. A lot of cholesterol. Oh, and the yolk? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that is what I'm doing. What's your thing? Just water. Really? Yeah. Ice. Water. Crushed ice. Damn. So yeah. your teeth are just going to be falling out of your mm -hmm. head. <laughs> I feel unwell. Damn. Yeah. Well, I'll, have, um, I'll have like uh, some spinach here and there if I'm feeling faint. You just chew on a leaf or two? But that's about some arugula, you know? Nice. A lot of pepper. A lot yeah. of pepper flavor from it's the uh, arugula. It's spicy. It's peppery. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you actually eat? You know, I'm just doing like no snacks. Three mm. meals, keeping it pretty standard, you know. And what are like? Give me an example. Like a of breakfast a day. is like one piece of bread and like two eggs. Oh, okay. And then lunch, 
will be like uh like up some kind of protein like a chicken salad oh that's good and then dinner like a like rice and chicken or something oh that's good and then that's it yeah yep. i miss i miss grain yeah that's the route i'm going i'm going no grain so. i know you're doing no bread no bread, no rice. I think I, I might miss rice. I think I might head that way after like week two, but yeah. I don't want to go four weeks of no carbs because I would lose my mind. Yeah, it's a lot, and you love bread. I mean, I've been there when we've got to week three. Of but no I get carbs. like I get like sick if I don't. You're, it's when withdrawals. I go no carbs. Your yeah. body is like tricking us into being like yeah. We turn into Schmeagol, dude. Our mm-hmm. body's just like mm-hmm. please let us. And I was also on the road, so. That's, now that I'm home, I do not envy it. Envy I'm it. on the. I'm home. If I was on the road, the hardest one for me has also been not drinking. Like at yeah, that wasn't hard at for comedy me. shows, I like to have like a drink. It, there I go there was stage. one night at, I went to Punchline after my shows, uh-huh. and it would have been nice to like have a few and hang out. Yeah, I was like nope, gotta go to bed. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate sober comics and want more than I used to. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I was like, anyone want coffee? And some comics like, yeah, I'd rather do a coffee than a drink. I don't drink, and I'm like, my guys, dude, this is my crew. It's Whereas weird. when I drink, I'm like, get these fucking nerds out of yeah. here, dude. Look at these guys knowing their limits. But that, but then we found out weigh in the day after weigh in, we'll both be at punchline together, so I we know. can like have a party. We're gonna actually like overdose on either bread or alcohol. Both. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're gonna be at punchline. Hesby Street reunites for Nathan Habib. How wild is that? Yeah, Emily will be on the show too. So That's our really friend fun. Nathan Habib, he's a comic in New York who started in the Bay Area with us. He uh, is recording a hour at An punchline. Album. So probably forty five or fifty. I think he's taping. Oh, he's taping video. A taping video, which I think is more expensive than just recording an album at the punchline, because they charge you for like the backdrop. I think. No. Am I making all that up? I think you're making that up. Or he got swindled. Well, they usually, if they record video, they'll put the bl- they'll put the curtain up. Uh, okay, yeah. so if you want that backdrop. But what I'm guessing he's doing, and you might know better than me, is that he's recording the audio for an album, and then yes. he's videotaping it, and for he's going to submit that for someone to tape a special. Yes, yes. But so he's it's not, not like he's going to release the video, would be my guess. Uh, no, he's hired a crew. Okay. So, so it's not it's not just like a tripod like we usually but even like it, usually do. Yeah. I mean Sammy Obey did the same thing. Oh, okay. So things of like that have been done. But you don't release Right. You can't release a special with the SF backdrop, I don't think. I think you have to pay for it. Right. And I think but I don't no know. No one's ever paid. done it. Yeah, no one's ever done it. Yeah. Um anyway, Nate Habib uh is is going to be in town and he asked specifically for the three of us which is so dumb because we'll bury the fuck out of oh him. dude he, i better he asked me to host i'm like he's good the fourth call. best comic i was like this good call yeah keep me and you as far away from each other yeah. on the lineup as well. i think what i think emily will cancel you think yeah because i don't Hell? think she likes me anymore i don't No, that's not and the case. no i don't think that's the case but what i'm uh I, she was stoked when she, when you were moving to L.A. She was like, oh, I hope he takes the uh, the room. Um, yeah, I'm just fucking around. But I do think uh, it is a, it, it's unnecessary to have four people on the show. So it's unless she can book something else good up there, I don't think she's going to make a trip just to do it. Well, she likes... I hope she, she has a boyfriend that lives It'd up there. It'd be really fun if all four of us <clears throat> could do that show. She has a boyfriend that lives up there. I'm on that punchline week, day after, the whole week after. So I'll be there all week. That's exciting. Who are you opening for? Adam Ray. Oh, fun. An L.A. comic. An L.A. comic. That's exciting. Most of the headliners are L.A. comics. We have like our front. Josh Johnson's in New York, who we just opened for. Oh, really? I thought he was L.A. No, he was well, just I guess he does on tour. Daily show. Right. So he would be in New York. It's funny. We have uh, people like talking outside of our open window for natural mm-hmm. light. So it does feel like a, a museum of podcasting. It that does. Like like, just... And in the in the. 2020s <laughs> here we are at hesby street this is a post-pandemic hobby podcasting boom during this time <laughs> and suicides dipped not as much as you would think <laughs> mainly because of podcasts they gave people hope <laughs> now, years later <laughs> this would usher us into the 2030s otherwise known as the post rogan era <laughs> yes when spotify collapsed suicides <laughs> finally took off <laughs> Dude, I would love to be in a podcast history book. Oh, yeah, it'd be great. It is getting to the, like, I don't, 
having a podcast is weird. Why? Because it was never something I think we had on our radar until the pandemic. It wasn't on my vision board. Yeah. And then we did it. And now we're still doing it because it's fun and like we've gotten to know people. Yeah. Well, we're like sharing a, a light, I think. Yeah. That like people, it brightens their day. But there is a stigma of having a podcast. Yes. Where it's like, oh, cool. Right. Even people that I know who listen to the podcast, but they'll be like, I don't listen to podcasts anymore. Yeah. And they'll be like, I'll listen to yours sometimes. People who feel bad Every, about not listening but, to ours, I'm like, I get it. But I feel like most people, myself included, goes through a podcast phase. And maybe you dip back in. Like, yep. I haven't listened to podcasts lately. And then not. It's like books for me. It's even sort of like stand-up. A lot of people will go yeah. to... like. Uh, they'll be like, I, I went to like five shows this year, six yeah. shows. And then they'll be like, I haven't been to a show in years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or concerts maybe. I don't know. It's weird too because um, I don't watch stand-up specials anymore really. Me either, yeah. Because there is, it's not as fun. It's not Live as fun. Live stand-up. And that's what I love about stand-up is it will yep. never be as fun. So you really do have to buy a ticket and go there and yep. be a part of something. And I'm not necessarily the type of person that likes to go out and be a part of anything. It'd be cool if specials didn't exist. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. And airplanes and cars. <laughs> that would be dope. So yeah, if that you're the comic in your town, you're the you're the top dog. Dude. They can't look, they can't find better. No one else is coming to town. No, I, I mean, I always thought about that like in terms of like I was watching uh tombstone up in the bay i was watching it with steve osborne we watched a tombstone and did you Great see that movie. movie yeah go ahead smoke that skin wagon yeah um my favorite line billy zane's in it yeah <clears throat> and he's like a traveling actor yeah he's a little bitch and he and he just crushes which is so funny to me because like it's it's a bunch of violent like d- you know kind of dumb cowboys in yeah. there and he's giving like a very like shakespearean performance yes. and then they give him a standing ovation and it was like uh he might be the 200th best actor in America at that point. Yeah. You know? But because he's the only one in Tombstone, Arizona. Doing the triple run. Yeah, doing the triple the 1800 triple run. Right. Uh, I just thought, like, it would have been cool to be a comic back then, even though comedy wasn't what, you know. But it's just, like, you come to town and people, like, are stoked to see you. Or they shoot you for being bad. No, I don't think so. That never actually happened. You know what is funny about that is like you think, God, I, I, I would always go, who who are these people that just gather at a place? Like we build a, I build a comedy show somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Like the back of this citizen public market. Mm-hmm. It's like gross. I mean, it's like a restaurant. Yeah. And all these chairs are laid out and it's empty in the beginning. I'm like, mm-hmm. who are these people that are going to fill this? And they show up. They show up. And they fill it it's out. And bizarre. you're kind of like, why? Like I don't want to negate what they're doing, but I also deep down, I'm like, why this they're on a different it's a different lifestyle than uh, yeah have. the world is like a brighter place mm-hmm. to them um but well but no i think it's because they work those 40 50 hour weeks and they need the escape yes and for them it's like it's only 90 minutes yeah right and it's something fun to do yeah. something different and they're there and then they're gone and that's it for them and it's fun right it's yeah. a, it's an escape from monotony, whereas mm-hmm. to us it is monotony. Right, exactly. This is where we always are. That every is night. work. Yeah. Um, and we're there for three hours. Right. Exactly. We're there early. We're there after. We're hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's just even more prevalent that that feeling of like, who are these people sitting down? When you see like in Tombstone, just a bunch of cowboys like, ah, oh, it's a some kind of show here everybody, tonight. Qu- everybody, quiet all right, down. let's all get. We gotta respect this man from the East Coast. Yeah, it's like one eyed Jack. I saved us some seats right here. I, I'm <laughs> holding this for my friend. <laughs> we'll do the lynching later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we are wanted, but uh, I hear this tonight we're good. all equal. So we're just gonna <laughs> sit down, watch the show. We'll have. We'll settle our quarrels later. Oh, I like this accent you got here. You like that? Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like a McConaughey thing. Yeah. I feel like you could be in a Western. Dude, Westerns are like the best. If you were in a Western, would you be stoked? Oh, yes. What would, like, what would you play though? Bartender probably. That'd be nice. Bartender, I'll do a, a water. I think I could be a deputy. Ooh. You know? A little like, uh, I, can, you know, I can help the sheriff. I could also bend, bend the rules a little bit. Somebody's got a nice little sack of coins for old Deputy Torio. Mm, Deputy no. Torio. I'd like to speak to uh, the sheriff. 
The sheriff's gone. Yeah, why do you want to... What, 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 what's, it, what's it regarding? Well, I want to settle a land dispute between me and the McCarthy's over there down at the end of Main Road. Well, let me tell you something. McCarthy's been in this land since the beginning. And by that, I mean eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When it was so just you, a pile of dust, I look around like... You mean now? They helped us take over the natives of this land. Wow. And for that reason, you newcomers coming, we don't take kindly to land thieves unless they were us. Well, that's sweet of you, little deputy, but I'm here for the sheriff. Oh, well, then just put your name on the list. (laughs) Go ahead and write the time in. You can leave time out blank. Uh, I didn't know you wanted to speak to the man. Dude, I love that. Remember when I worked on my Jim Beam audition for so long with yeah. my southern accent? Mm-hmm. God, that, that was, was so fun. fun. And then you didn't get it. The commercial never happened. I think I got it. Did I tell you that story? No, I remember we did think you got it. I told people you got it. I got it. And then I think Jim Beam backed out because it was too like politically. Mm-hmm. It was trying to make like a uniting political statement, mm-hmm. which they were like. And then the insurrection happened. It didn't play well. Well, then that director was the di- director of the hummer commercial that i didn't have a line in but he's like let's go with you and i'm like i don't think um this is a good fit and that was like my best gig ever right and i was like why am i how did i get this like i um, but i think he just loved me and felt bad for the commercial that didn't happen right and appreciated like how much i worked on the accent it's it's fun to get work when people feel bad for you oh my god it's the best way it's the best yeah it's the best like when i did that i did this hazmat suit thing it was like 100 degree heat and mm-hmm. people like you poor thing i'm like remember today <laughs> remember what happened today when you're working on a fucking movie remember how much i kept my mouth shut yeah all this? remember like, i passed out for an hour and a half you know who wouldn't talk to hr even at the face of death <laughs> Get us Zach Chapeloni. Zach Chapeloni. He will not. He's the understander. <laughs> <laughs> Supremely understanding. Old to a fault Chapeloni. <laughs> All right, man. End it on a banger. Okay. Here we go. This guy loves billboards. <laughs> this guy loves billboards. I'll tell you what, this guy. Oh, excuse me. Apparently, this guy loves three billboards outside of <laughs> Cinephile. Would, what would your... Uh, if you Okay, so you're an athlete. Let's say you make the Niners, right? Right. And you know that this is... And so they're asking you questions. This is a hopeful guy. He's shown out at practice, Zach yeah. Chapeloni. I would have fun with it. Yeah. Just be like, I know what they're going to use this for. I know what they're asking when yeah, they right, say, what right. are your favorite hobbies? So that when they pull it up, they go, yeah. I tell you what, this guy is a... He's an animal on that field. He's yeah. a dog. But when he's at home, Gossip Girl and Lollipops. <laughs> it says soliloquies. <laughs> I don't know what that is, Mark, but uh, it sounds it sounds, uh, it sounds sounds poetic. You know, I look at this guy in the locker room. Handsome guy. Six-pack, flowing hair, single. But apparently, he loves to do his nails, watch Sex in the City, and he swears to Christ he's a, he's a charlotte. <laughs> Total proof. Looking at him, you think Miranda. <laughs> You're looking at him, you think. But according to the cheat sheet right here, it says Charlotte. So we'll he, go with it. He's a self-proclaimed Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, Between yeah. the ears, a Charlotte. Well, yours would be like he loves Dave Matthews fan, and he's sorry. About, he wanted everyone to know he's, he's sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> I love it. Very apologetic about his true self. He's. <laughs> You know, the lack of confidence in his eyes when I asked what type of music he likes. Dude, I was in the Bay, caught up with a friend, and she was like, uh, she brought that up. She's like, you know, she was talking about another comic that we both knew, and she's like, she she really likes Dave Matthews Band, and she doesn't get why people don't like him. She and then it was kind of a backhanded compliment. She's like, she's not like you, where it's like you know they suck. Yeah, <laughs> weird. Yeah, she's like, you know, like they're terrible. I've always and I'm been like, in the other boat, and I'm always like, I wanted to correct her and be like, all right, that's not the wording I'd give it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But okay, and you're like, you get that? I don't think they yeah. suck, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not like ironically seeing them every year. <laughs> right. Um, I'm in that boat though. I, I'm the guy that's like, why is this bad? But the amount of laughs you get when you say <laughs> sorry about liking Dave Matthews man in like stand up, yeah. I'm like, okay, there's something in the culture yeah. of America that well, you I, know what that it I've is, missed. Is uh, 
and it's a little it's people a little bit older than us because uh-huh. they were really big in the 90s when we weren't quite old enough to like you know we heard them on the radio a lot yeah but we weren't a part of that like the culture their fans do suck oh okay it was a lot of like the dude like bro it was like the like bro Grateful dudes. Dead? oh you know it was like flip-flop plaid shirts just annoying uh, okay it'd be like the equivalent of tech bros now back then you know what i mean okay okay but let me okay how about this though if it was a themed bar mm-hmm. a dave matthews themed bar mm-hmm. would you go like hang out there like they play the music, but everyone's dressed like who you're talking about. That works there. I'd go. Ch- hmm. I mean, I feel like you'd sit at the bar and be like, I sh-, and you look down the bar, and there's a guy just like you. That's like, we should go. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would check it. I don't think I would like that. Yeah, well, I've talked about this before. I don't like like uh, anything that's like themed cult. Like it's like surfer culture, weed culture, m- music. It's, it's like anybody. It's anybody that that's uh, takes the literary that seriously. Yeah. It's just like, all right, this isn't fun. Lit, yeah. Let's just all just enjoy whatever. Football culture, though, man. Don't like it. I love it. Yeah. I don't I, like it either. <laughs> I freaking love, love it, it, man. I get hard. I turn on the film. My wife's like, you're not paying any attention to me. I'm like, why don't you roll over and watch the damn movie on your iPad? You like this mansion? I'm an OC. They're in an I formation. Hasn't been seen in the last decade. <laughs> Every time this fullback lines up, I swear to God, it's play action. These guys are <laughs> dictating exactly what they're doing. It's like the life of a football yeah. wife. We're, we're all proud of you, honey. Yeah. I have to. You go know see. you're not the coach, right? <laughs> hey, trust me out there. That's what matters. I send the emails. He doesn't email me back, but he reads them. I Let know. Let me tell it. you something. Quality control assistant. <laughs> All right. Quality's the first word. Assistant's the last. <laughs> For a reason. <laughs> uh, yep. It's all the same. Whether or not you like football or Dave Matthews, you're annoying. I want to be, oh my God, I want to be all in on, fo- if there's a f- culture I could join, it would be football, dude. You can do that. No, no. I mean like coaching, like that lifestyle where like what we do for comedy, right. where like we don't need to make a ton of money yet. You know, the goal mm-hmm. is to make money and, mm-hmm. and be successful, but we love doing it so right. much that we don't give ourselves an ultimatum of like, all right, two more months. Right. I want to be that. Like there are guys who do that for football. Like if you ever watch the and a Netflix doc, uh, last chance you coaches assistants are living in the dorms getting paid zero dollars yeah. and they're just every day like Dude, that's what's come so, on guys let's go that's what's so crazy about football or any major sport is like there are so many people that give their whole lives to it and yeah get nothing yeah they just get nothing yeah but then you got the tom sula's you ever right. look up tom sula jim tom sula no he was his niners d line coach mm-hmm the funniest story ever. He he the all the D linemen loved him because when you're a D lineman, you're just like, be a dog, fight in there. And he's yeah. just dripping dip spit. He's yeah. this short, stout, fat Italian guy. Yeah. Slicked back hair, had like 12 dead end jobs. He's like, I was a door to door doormat salesman. <laughs> they sound <laughs> fictional. Just, yeah. I lived in my car under a freeway. It's like not I do love that you showed up a door big. Like, couldn't help but notice you don't have a doormat. It's the easiest one to I find. Got, I got one right here. I literally drop it. You give me $12. I'll leave it I'm here. I'm gone forever. <laughs> Otherwise, I got to slide it into this envelope. It's tricky. Just give me the 12. I'll get out of your way. Nine. Give Can me I, nine. What do you have? Eight, and I get to use your bathroom <laughs> for as long as I want. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> But he became the head coach of the Niners, and it was a right. shit show. We I'm were sure. so bad. Yeah, you had some weird coaches yeah. for a while. There. And he was like the pinnacle of the weirdness. Yeah. Where then you go, okay, there's a limit to this guy living on a dream <laughs> that's just underqualified. <laughs> Maybe someone that's played. Right. Sign him. Well, just like not an X's and O's guy. Keep right. the rah rah guys at the position. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he was, he, I mean, his, his people started making up jobs for him. On like Twitter threads or like sports art, like dead spin articles. Yeah. And it would be like <laughs> Super Mario action animation model. Give me a second. Short mustache. 